The Lakers found the promised land once again in 2020, winning the NBA championship in dominating fashion. Although, it still feels like they have something to prove. This is the truth about the Los Angeles Lakers. Thank you all for keeping up with my channel. If you are enjoying, please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as your guys' interactions is what makes this channel. When LeBron joined the Lakers, there were people saying that this move was strictly for business, or so he could pursue his acting career. I mean, look who's laughing now. And I want my damn respect too. <laughs> After successfully trading for Anthony Davis and assembling a great squad around them, the Lakers became NBA champions. We already know this. However, the truth about the Los Angeles Lakers is that their work is not done and they must get better in order to defend their title. Next season is coming up very quickly. The Lakers will only have 71 days of rest this offseason while teams who did not make the bubble will have 285 days of rest. That's a huge discrepancy. This is not the end of the world, but it's important to mention that LeBron James will be heading into his 18th season and will be turning 36 late December. Nevertheless, LeBron James has been the ultimate athlete and will probably be fine with the quick turnaround, possibly countering it with load management. The biggest problem here is that the Lakers have some key expiring contracts of role players, including Dwight Howard and Markeith Morris, while also Anthony Davis, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, and Rajon Rondo have player options, all which will probably opt out. This is interesting because at the end of most games, Morris, Rondo, and KCP would be on the floor. I don't think they can really afford to lose them but teams always overpay for recent champions. And with Anthony Davis obviously getting a large contract, how much money will they have left to spend? It's likely they retain Morris, but KCP and Rondo are wild cards to me. It seems like they have a bunch of teams interested in throwing money at them. Money the Lakers do not really have. Dwight Howard is also interesting because I would much rather have him instead of JaVale McGee, and it's also possible that other teams will want to sign him. Lastly, they also have Kyle Kuzma's extension coming back, and he's supposedly expecting a quote-unquote sizable contract. Yeah, the Lakers definitely have some moves to make. Let's look at some positives. They still have Avery Bradley, who opted out of the bubble, and then Alex Caruso. Two players who will help fill out any losses in the backcourt. They have Taylor Horton Tucker, who impressed me in the short amount of time he played in the bubble. He has insanely long arms, great defensive ability, and passing vision. He just needs to continue to improve his jump shot. If the Lakers lose the players I had mentioned before, there are options of hungry veterans who want to compete for a championship in this free agency. These players include Serge Ibaka, Danilo Gallinari, Tristan Thompson, and Nerlens Noel. Most of these options are better than the players that they would lose. I mean, if they were to sign Danilo Gallinari, his three-point ability would be crazy. I'd also like to see them make a move for a guard. Maybe some sleeper picks like an Alec Burks or Justin Holiday. It's just interesting. We could see a lot of roster change within the Lakers because they want to gear up for another championship run. I'm not too sure about any trade possibilities before the season. It could happen, but I think they're more likely to wait and see how Kuzma plays this year because he's their best quote unquote tradable asset. As long as LeBron is around, anything is possible. People still doubt led GM. But seriously, as long as the Lakers have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, they will be fine. 
especially in the regular season. The others increase in importance when the playoffs come around, but they always seem to find their guys. Who knows, Taylen Horton Tucker could take a big sophomore leap, or Kuzma could solidify himself as the third star on this roster. What's more likely? Thank you all for watching to the end. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Also, do leave a comment as I enjoy talking basketball with you guys. And I'll catch you guys next time.